The robot Servosila engineer comes in many different configurations, that meet requirements of various mission profiles. This video will guide you through the process of choosing a configuration that meets requirements of your concept of operation or target applications, and fits your budget. The following components are configured individually. A chassis. A robotic arm. A sensor package. A gripper. A radio communications package. And an operator control unit, or OCU. The chassis houses a motor assembly and a battery that powers the robot. The two key configuration options are a flipper threads or flippers, and a turret servo. The flipper threads extend the length of the chassis which is needed when climbing stairs, or negotiating a terrain. You may choose to include or not to include the flippers into configuration of your robot. Include the flippers if you want your robot to climb stairs. Exclude the flippers if the robot will be used as a carrier platform for payloads that do not require stairs climbing. The flippers are also used to lift the chassis off the ground to extend the reach of payloads. The other choice to make is whether or not to add a turret servo to your robot's chassis. The turret servo is a rotating hard point used for mounting various payloads on the chassis such as a robotic arm, a robotic head, a scanner, or a directional antenna. The turret servo can only be excluded if the chassis is bought as a standalone platform, otherwise, it must be included into the configuration since it provides an important degree of freedom for the robotic arm of the Servosila engineer robot. The main battery is custom made to fit the chassis, and thus must be included into all configurations of the robot to provide power. Consider purchasing a few spare, field replaceable batteries. The robotic head houses a computerized control system, a sensor package, and a radio communication module. The head can be mounted directly on the turret servo, or mounted on the top of a multi-segment robotic arm manipulator. A robotic gripper can be also mounted below the robotic head. Now let's look at the configuration of the robotic arm. The arm is made of servo joints, and rigid segments that connect them. The more joints are included into the configuration, the more degrees of freedom the arm obtains, and the more of a flexible tool the arm becomes. In the simplest case, there is no arm at all, and the robotic head is mounted directly on the top of the turret servo mechanism. A non-actuated rigid extender neck is needed to move the center of gravity towards the middle of the robot. This kind of basic configuration is useful for reconnaissance, visual inspection, or for carrying mission payloads that don't require a robotic arm for operation. It is worth noting that a gripper can be added to this simplistic configuration, primarily for delivering and dropping of objects at desired locations. A one-segment arm significantly increases mission capabilities of the robot. Such a robot can raise its sensor head, and use a gripper to grab objects from the ground or tabletop. A single segment arm can come with one servo drive joint, or with two servo drive joints. A single segment arm configuration can be enhanced by adding a gripper, or a rotating gripper. The rotating gripper allows the robot to rotate door handles to open doors in buildings. The gripper enables robots in such a configuration to perform many kinds of disaster response or public safety missions including removal of dangerous objects from populated areas. A two-segment arm allows the robot to reach out much further away from the chassis, or much higher up, and enables applications such as visual automobile inspection, and handling of potentially explosive objects. Such a two-segment arm comes with either two servo joints or with three servo joints. Both of the arm configurations enable a very flexible remote object manipulation, while the arm with three servo joints has some advantages in confined areas where the chassis motion is restricted such as tunnels or cellars. Choose a rotating gripper over a regular gripper, if your mission profiles call for opening doors by rotating door handles, or if an extra degree of freedom of the gripper is required for precise object manipulation. The gripper can also be excluded from the configuration, if the arm of the purchased robot is to be used for carrying specific payloads, for example, ground or wall penetrating radars, rather than for object manipulation using a gripper. Now let's look at the configuration options of the robotic head, which include A choice of onboard computing power A choice of a radio communication package And a choice of a sensor package 
The robotic head houses a main computer of the robot. The computer comes as either a regular computer or a computer with GPGPU capable processor, that enables massively parallel computations using OpenCL or CUDA technologies. Choose the massively parallel computer if a high degree of autonomy of the robot is one of your mission's requirements. Now let's look at the radio communication package options. If the robot is to be used in outdoor environments such as for disaster response missions, then the radio modem option is the only suitable option for the radio communications package. There are several options available for the radio modem's operation frequencies. The choice of the frequency depends on the regulations of the country where the robot is to be used. Wi-Fi is a low-cost option for robots intended for use in laboratories, offices, or campuses, primarily in academia. You may also choose not to include any radio communications package at all, if you plan to install your own communications equipment, or if the robot will be exclusively controlled via a cable, such as those robots used in underground environments. A Portable Operator Control Unit, or OCU, is specifically designed for controlling the robot in outdoor environments such as in disaster-struck areas. The unit is a passively cooled computer with a radio modem and a battery included into a watertight enclosure. The unit comes with ports for a joystick and either a virtual reality goggles or a portable touchscreen display. Please note that in order to use the OCU, the head of the robot must be equipped with a radio modem. The OCU also allows you to control the robot via a cable. You may choose not to purchase the OCU if you plan to use a laptop computer to control the robot, or if you provide your own radio communications equipment. Now let's look at the sensor package options. The following sensors can be installed in the robotic head, or mounted on the top of the robotic head. A wide angle of view forward, and rear view cameras. A powerful optical zoom camera. A thermal vision camera. A laser scanner. A GPS receiver. An inertial sensors unit, or IMU. A stereo vision pair of cameras. And a headlight. Some of those sensors such as the optical zoom camera, the thermal vision camera, and the headlight greatly improve visual inspection capabilities and situational awareness of the operator in challenging environments. The thermal vision camera enables several kinds of search and rescue, and fire fighting missions. The laser scanner acts as a short-range radar, and helps the robot detect and avoid obstacles. The laser scanner also enables 3D scanning, and automatic creation of detailed maps of the environments, including floor plans. The laser scanner, GPS receiver, IMU, and stereo vision cameras are key enablers for autonomy of the robot. Consider purchasing those sensors if your mission profiles call for a wider autonomy of the robot. Now let's recap the process of configuring your Servosila engineer robot. Step 1, configure the chassis. Step 2, configure the robotic arm. Step 3, configure the robotic head. Step 4, configure the radio communications package, an OCU. Step 5, configure a sensors package. Hope this guide was helpful. Thank you for watching. Please visit our website. Goodbye.